good morning respected delegates good morning to all a heartily welcome to our renowned professor renowned scientist dr nargund vibhi sir for this fifth day morning session webinar before going to start his brief bio data at the outset i heartily welcome to our honorable vice chancellor dr ken kattimani sir and all the officers of the university and all the scientists of the different parts of the country from the across the country also and also i heartily welcome our coordinators and uh, the co organizers of this 10 days webinar on role of nanotechnology in food and agriculture it is immense pleasure to welcome our mentor guide and the renowned scientist professor none other than our dr v b nargun sir it's a small brief bio data of our nargun sir nargun sir is presently working as a icr emeritus professor in the field of plant pathology at university of agriculture sciences dharwad karnataka he was a former professor and university head of department of plant pathology in the university of agriculture sciences dharwad he had both undergraduate and postgraduate was completed in uas bangalore phd from uas dharwad he has awarded a icr hrd fellowship and also awarded as a gold medal for his phd dissertation sir has guided 10 phd students and 10 msc students in the field of plant pathology during the span of 3 decades during of teaching in both ug and pg program at uas dharwad he worked in the college of agriculture raichur for 13 years and in bhimrayan gudi for 6 years he worked on plant disease epidemiology management of diseases by resistance and chemical means and application of nanotechnology in plant disease management he was active member in the project on pomegranate bacterial blight and its management he also worked on various crops on integrated diseases and pest management with entomology group he is associated with the development of 15 technology in various crops for the useful of farming community sir has visited spain for presenting paper on pomegranate disease and usa during the year 2014 for training on nanotechnology and pioneer in starting green nanotechnology laboratory at uas dharwad sir is a recipient of sir c v raman award during the year 2005 in agriculture and book paradise best teacher award during the year 2007 he is the simple humble and dedicated person in the field of plant pathology i heartily welcome to this 10 days webinar on role of nanotechnology in food and agriculture sir welcome to you for this 10 days a fifth day morning session sir sir now your start sir please unmute sir okay is it audible is it audible yes. sir huh visible yes sir visible and audible sir okay thank you good morning to you all honestly i am much favored can say it is my native place where i worked more than 18 years in hyderabad karnataka area old but kalyan karnataka now that is the one second one is i am very honored to be associated with this webinar because the person who are involved one is professor sharan gowda who invited me and before that honorable vice chancellor of us raichur professor katimani who has taken much initiation in handling the different kinds of the webinars and i hope it is one of the marathon session as for the webinar i have seen in this space so equally well i thank doe professor mg party and also dr bk desai and the organizing secretary of this sharan gowda and also virin gowda and others and all of them i welcome honestly speaking i am one of the delegate or participant with these things all these days whatever the presentations done in the morning and evening i was one of the delegate with you all so that is the first and the most important one so whatever the information they have said i want take to reduce them at some time it is possibly i have to include because what we have done some based on the green nanotechnology something has to be done for these things 
So with this brief introduction in relation to my association with the Raichur, we start with the presentation on these things. What is this? So now we are going to enter application of nanotechnology in plant pathology. So that is my topic. So I'm very much thankful to you and hope I have got nearly 103 slides and the time given is 90 minutes. Hopefully I can finish off in 65 to 70 minutes. Remaining thing definitely will go for those things. Next one. So now before going for these things, what is the journey of plant pathology in relation to nanotechnology? So there are two types. One, I entered how in relation to the nanotechnology. Second one, what exactly the nanotechnology in relation to these things. So first one, I would like to introduce ourselves. What is nano? Hopefully we have done much thing on these things, but my explanation of nano will be something different for these things. And then history, most of them have covered, but I wanted to see where they have not touched. So what are the new things which I can add them? Because so many other persons have given wonderful history of those things. So I would like to reduce them, but wherever they're lacking, I would like to find those things that is for these things. So green synthesis is our major one. We have put a lot of efforts on these things. We are going to have on these things, synthesis characterized and other thing else. So how where we can apply these things in relation to plant pathology and agriculture, whether can we do for the management, can we do for the evaluation of the characteristic of all these things? Definitely we are having something else and equally well, it is not always true that it is something else is there that is phytotoxicity is bound to occur on these things. So under these conditions now, what would be the conclusion part? We'll see now one by one for these things. First now, I'll introduce in relation to the word, what is nano? So when I entered in 2014 for these things, it is exactly a blind person who has entered in relation to the eating or learning with elephant. Exactly, it has happened with me also. Someone said it is very difficult. Someone said it is a different manner. You cannot do it. It is such a difficult one, other thing else. So later when we see the entire thing, hopefully some slowly we got the answer. The first question is whether it is me. Nana means it is isn't me. Somebody said, no, sir, it is not you. But it is somebody else, you, Nina. So that is the one. Finally, we decided, no, sir, it is not possible for us at this age, you don't enter said, no, no. I also accepted, yes, it is a good way for these things. But the inner feeling of the youngsters who were with me, they said, it is not this, no, no, sir. It is no, no, K-N-O-W, K-N-O-W. Yes, definitely, I accepted. And the, finally, there is one IRS student, Srinivas, who was with me for one small training program. He said, sir, if we do it now, it is only chance. Otherwise, never you will go in these things. With all this background now, I entered into the nanotechnology work in relation to these things. Hopefully everyone says there is a lot of, there is plenty of, of room at the bottom. It is the one Richard Feynman said for these things. Try to remember, he is the one who shared the Nobel Prize with other two persons. It is not given to only alone, but it is the one who has been shared with Sivincher and the Tomanga for these things. And he is a man who never worked in the laboratory rather than he worked mentally for those things. So quantum electrodynamics is the one where a lot of thinking has to do and put forward the hypothesis, how best one can do. So everything need not be proved, but hypothetically you can prove for those things. So it is the, that type of research work he has done that is quantum electrodynamics. Then he assisted, please remember in the development of atomic bomb also, and he's involved in many things else. In his biography and something else, we'll come across wonderful statement is lacking the liking is teaching with the undergraduate students rather than the postgraduate students. He worked in characteristic of the what we call by the California Institute, but also he worked at the Cornell University. So I have to say Cornell University because I am lucky enough to visit that laboratory also for these things. So next one is in Cornell University there is one by Professor Anil Netravali. He is a man who is working in relation to fiber nanotechnology. So just see now, these are the two important characteristics. He has got the wonderful instrumentation and a model of the experimentation, what can find is the person. So what is the one is, if at all you make some movement, how much of the sweat it comes, how best I can manage it, how best I can prepare a self-cleaning and healthy clock. 
So he beautifully explained, I can prepare the best cloth. If you wear now for throughout the year, you can wear it. There is no dust at all. The same question was asked to the ladies. They said, no, sir, we don't want because they want to change the saris. If I use one sari forever, it cannot be acceptable. So self-cleaning has only limitation in relation to factories and other things else for these things. So is the second one for these things. And the third extraordinary thing what you can find in Cornell University is they have developed the C treatment once. It is not only the chemical, it is what they are going to use, the silica gel and so many other formulations. They are very much essential. It is not mere the nanomaterial along with this what they apply. That is one of the best one you can say in relation to the C treatment. That is the historical significance they have done in relation to these things. So next one is somebody says, Professor Katesh Katti, father of green nanotechnology. So he happens to visit our university more number of times. I can say three times I was associated with his arrival and movement. So it is he who has explained the characteristic of green nanotechnology and you can say convinced all of us to do something more on these things. His major contribution, which we like this. So some of the crops he suggested, maize is the one, soybean is the third, second, and mango is the third one. So along with these things, he said in the mango, the pericarp is more important for the green nanosynthesis rather than the sweet pulp for these things. So the different parts of the plant, different grains, another thing else he said, that is the one for these things. It is the visit which we have seen in relation to our university with our professors and all other teachers associated with this group. So which are the breakthrough? So I would like to say some breakthrough in this thing is just imagine the printing of the Old Testament in a very smallest form. What they can say is by using of the focus ion beam, you can find the printing on a golden layer based with reference to the silicon. So which are the ones gallium ions are used. So total pages 1,929 9, chapters, so many words and other things else. But just imagine all these things have been written in just 90 minutes. So it is really a breakthrough. Just put the same question to ourselves. What is the one is, can we write the thesis and research paper in just 90 or 70 minutes? Because when 1,200 pages have been written by the nano, why can't we? Of time, hopefully we will find some extraordinary information in relation to the printing technology for these things. Hopefully you have come across the another beautiful example. What is that one is the 3D printing which has come across with the nanotechnology for this. Another exceptional phenomenon which we have seen in the 2018 paper from Chinese University. So what is it? There is a perennial plant, alfalfa, not alfalfa. It is a alfalfa, a perennial plant, which contains the pure gold in its tissue. So just see now the present day price of the gold is 50,000 for 10 grams. But if you just raise the crop, you can come across the gold as such. So actually they have identified the presence of the gold particles in the these plants. They are having the characteristic of these things. Now the question is whether they have practically taken the gold nanoparticles from the soil. No, it is they have absorbed from the environment. So what is the information or the conclusion? Gold nanoparticles are produced, present in the environment, are absorbed from the environment by the plant. So that is the another most important character what we can say for these things. So nanoscience can be applied in different fields, different characteristics. Definitely everyone will like apply. So where we are going to use in agriculture in relation to pesticide, this is diagnosis, disease management. If at all I want to introduce for these things, go back to us, see the surrounding, what is the nature? If you come across the nature, hopefully you will find many answers for many problems, whatever we face today for these things. So we are going back to the nature and see what is happening around these things. So there is tsunami, what will happen during that time? You may not believe the nanoparticles are formed. So due to the industrial ones, combustions you are going to find, fire fun you are going to find, volcanoes you are going to find. So these are the ones which you can find in the natural way or by artificial way. So even by the characteristic of friction, you are going to find. My teacher used to say, Professor C.N. Rao in one of the meeting, so beautifully he said, whether you like it or not, if you are surviving in the environment of Bangalore, every day you are taking the nanoparticles. So he says, there is no question of the nanoparticles causing the damage. It is the one school of thought what they say for these things. 
In the conclusion also, someone will say, it need not be one, sir, it has got so many hazardous phenomena also. So definitely, whatever is there, you have to select according to your convenience, use them to the greatest extent possible for these things. Even high temperature area, you can have the phenomenon to form the characteristic of the nanoparticles, but also they have got the character to tolerate for these things. So this is the one what you can say for this environment in relation to the nanoparticles. So naturally, what we are going to find, two, three beautiful example we can find for these things. There are some insects which practically float on water. We call by the term as water striders. So what they are, they are having the practically nanoparticles on the surface of the flex. What is that? It is what we call by the term as hairy like structures. They are going to find. Similarly, there is another example is the hornet hive. It is the thermovoltaic and the photovoltaic. That means response to the temperature and response to the light. Similarly, token beaks of these, these are so strong that they can make injury directly on the woods to create their own shelter. Equally well, the spider silk, it is the one strong and flexible. So these are the things which you can find around us every day around surrounding our environment or the nature. So if you keenly observe them, so hopefully you will find the characteristic of these nanoparticles on the surface of the insects. So that is the one phenomenon. So insects, they have the characteristic, what we call the change in the coloration. It is attributed to this. So I would like to add in relation to the term, what is called by the term as this lotus in relation to the nanostructure. But remember, it will not take the water droplet on the upper surface. If you turn the leaf upside down, definitely it is meant for using as a plate for taking the food. We have taken many number of times the food outside. So what is that one is you have to change the surface and then definitely you can take the food. So that is the one, the lower surface will not easily acceptable for the utilization for the food purpose, but on the lower surface, definitely it can be used as the food plate for these things. So next one is the shark skin. So Esther December professor said very beautifully, it will not allow the characteristic of bacteria to enter. Not only that, it will never come in contact with the water, though it is completely surviving in the water. What is the nature? It is mainly because of this hydrophobic structure associated with these things. So these are the one natural in relation to these things. Hopefully yesterday, day before yesterday, everything else, everyone has explained and the entire set webinar is also on these things, food and agriculture, definitely you can find for these things. So where I am going to find? I am finding mainly in relation to the plant pathology for these things. So if at all I want to enter for these things, just recollect it is a photo taken from the agrios. So where you can find where the plant disease are going to affect. So from the root zone to the stem, to the leaf, to the flowers and fruits, including the top. So these are the ones where you can find the healthy one. So what else we can do? So we have to create such an environment surrounding this so that I can reduce the disease to the greater extent. So who are the pathogens? You can say fungi, bacteria, molecules, parasitic plants, virus, nematodes, all these are the ones you can say mainly associated as the plant pathogens for these things. So those who are just introducing in relation to the plant pathology as such, just recollect though we have the recently disease tetrahedron, the disease is represented by three. One is the pathogen, second one is the environment, third one is the host. If these three are there, then only we can find the disease. Later they have added the other two factors, what is called by the term is time and the human entry. So from disease triangle, we entered into the disease tetrahedron for these things. Now, so where I'm going to de decide now, so I'm going to deal in relation to nanotechnology in plant pathology. So I define what is the disease now. Now we are going to have where I can apply in management, in identifying the toxins, particularly aflatoxin and the so many fumarosins, which are there in this. To have the resistance, we can use the characteristic of silica and related ones. Sensors to identify the disease. We have got the beautiful example in these things. Management in the glass house and to some extent in the field. So can we use them directly by antimicrobial agents or smart delivery detection? But mainly I am confining in relation to what is called by the term as in the management of these group of pathogens for these things. So in all these things, we are introducing ourselves to the word green. Hopefully in the last four days, we use green to the greater extent. Hopefully in future also we used to say, green is the one supposed to be the most safest one. It is the strong belief 
that the plants have got so many number of chemicals. So there is a one book which I have read in my UC level that phenolic compounds, how many are there? Nearly 80,000 phenolic compounds are present in the plant. So nobody knows exactly which phenolic compound is going to play a role in these things. Along with this, we have the terpenoids, then alkaloids and proteins and other things else which have a role in relation to the, this green nanotechnology. So when I use the, this green nanotechnology or the green materials, they also act as the gum-like substance. That is, stabilizer also help in the characteristic of formation and also in characteristic of acting as a stabilizer. So there is one by name Professor Thomas from Kerala Basic University. So he has used to the maximum extent, whatever the ways you come across from the cotton, from the banana and other things else, he has developed them into the characteristic, what we call by the term as agri waste into the nano products, which are very useful. He had a good association in relation to the Brazil, then and also the USA. He has made his students to the greater extent who have learned with him and they are working in the characteristic of nano for these things. So that is the one recycling of the phenomenon associated with this. So in the synthesis, everybody has explained top down and the bottom approach, but remember the bottom approach carried out at the UK. What is the information is that they want to create the single layer of the organic molecule. What is that molecule? The cell membrane. If at all they succeed continuously, their aim is that slowly we can introduce the DNA or RNA on this and can we create something, an initiation of the life for these things. So that is the one, if I start with the single layer of the cell membrane, slowly I can introduce the next chemical, what is called by the term as DNA and RNA inside this and slowly can we create the life for this. It is the one where you can find a lot of work carried out in relation to the nanotechnology at UK Laboratories. So in relation to VAS Tharwad, we have associated with the many persons, they are helped to the greater extent. So we are using the characteristic of plants, fungi, bacteria, yeast, titosome, and within the plants, we have got the series of plant materials, which I show later. Then green synthesis of the copper, silver, iron, zinc, and sulfur we tried. The basic information I would like to say in this case is why the copper and sulfur is they are the two best fungicides for the management of many diseases. Copper for the characteristic for the bacteria and the oomycetes and sulfur for the powdery medus. But the defect is that these two are contact. What is the term? These two are contact. If we convert them into the characteristic of nano and make them to be systemic, definitely the entire world of disease management would change. So slowly some success is there and equally well we have come across with the failures in these things also. But this is with this concept, we select these two. Then FEZN is the only one which you can supplement. And also there are so many fungicides which are coming across with the iron and the characteristic of the zinc, zinab, farabam, and all those things that are derived from this. The next question is why I selected the silver? So among all the things, please remember silver and gold are the best method to work for the characteristic of nanoparticles. So for these things, Sven Gorda used to say so beautifully in one of his seminars, if you wear the gold for one year, and if you have got the 10 gram on the first day, after one year, if you measure, it will never be 10 grams, it has come down. The question is the reduction in the gold, where it has gone. The answer he beautifully said, it has entered into our body or the environment through the gold nanoparticles. Because of this, it has reduced the weight. So similarly, since we cannot handle so costly, so we started with the silver and silver is the best to do many of the work associated with these things, right? Then we have characterized with relation to the term UV spectra, which we have studied also, SCM, EDX and EFM. Today we are going to have some discussion and phytotox studies, what we are experiencing and our experience also we are going to give. Then antifungal, antibacterial and seed borne diseases. This is the one, what we can say for this. So now almost 20 minutes is over in relation to introduction part. Sorry, but anyway, we we're going to do it. So what is the thing is, what we have used, eucalyptus, neem leaves, pomegranate eril, then pomegranate pericar, thevetia is the one where my friend who worked in Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, he found one of the best insecticidal property, aloe vera very well, then chitosan, cotton stem, then characteristic of clove and other things else. So some of the papers have been presented and they have been published in the International Journal also for these things. 
No. Microorganisms, hopefully everyone will say, you can change in relation to the biotechnology. If at all you want to change them, Vigneshwaran says beautifully, it is not only that you can manipulate by changing the microorganism, next in turn to the nanotechnology. So you can join these two together, bio and nanotechnology together. So these are the organisms which you can grow in laboratory, you can do it, and very any time you can multiply to the greater extent because the total area, time, and the material required for the multiplication is very less. So Vigneshwaran is a man who is working at Bombay CTCRI Bombay for the nanotechnology for these things. So with reference to microorganisms, what we use, Vinay, my, one of my good friend and student, so who worked in relation to kytosan based ones, but he used the characteristic of bacteria that is Pseudomonas fluorescens and Bacillus septilis, fungus Trichoderma harjianum, and yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So what he has done, he has selected them from the natural field, identified with the molecular characteristics, then used the extract for the synthesis of the different kinds of the nanoparticles for this thing. So what are the instrumentation we have at Harvard in nanotechnology? So we have got the characteristic of SCM with PRAX. Next one is the AFM, then sonicator, UV, and particle size analyzer, and vertical and horizontal ball base. These are the ones. You may not believe when we entered, we started with only one, these two. Slowly we improved all these things have entered one by one for these things. The third one was the ball mill. Then we got these two instrumentation. So because of the instrumentation, we started phenomenon. What else you can find for these things? So among all these things, we have used the different plant materials. See now in case of clove, we use the characteristic of flower, but in case of thevetia, we use the seeds. In soybean also, we use the seeds. And in case of neem, we have used the leaves. So these are having the characteristic of these things. We use these plant material for first one, we started with the copper and silver, then we enter into the other group of the things. So it is a very simplest and equally well patient requirement. So if at all we want to start the characteristic of the synthesis, what is required? First one is the metal salt and the microorganism extract or microorganism alone or plant extract. So what are the criteria? So they are the ones you can find one is the mixing ratio, pH, temperature, and incubation period. Everybody says it is easy. Nobody will give you the exact composition and the time, temperature in their papers. You have to do permutation combination, then only you will come across for these things. Then sometimes you have to add the gum or the surfactant, sometimes you need not add. So with all permutation combination, you have to do the phenomenon for these things. So afterwards, what you can find, it is the one, the shape of nanoparticles are there. It is cost effective and eco-friendly. I would like to say one practical thing is that in green, the exact size cannot be achieved compared to what only the chemicals are there. Chemicals you can find every particle must be of the same size, same thing else. But in green, there is always some variations is bound to occur for these things. Hopefully it is the chemical and in green, you have got so many other chemicals which are involved in the reaction to the great reaction. So in a very simple method, we have taken the Thevetia plant, taken the fruit, then seeds, 25 grams in 250 ml, boil it, then go for the centrifugation, extract it. In a similar fashion, you can do many number of combinations for these things. Now what we have done, we have got the characteristic of the extract associated with these things. So one is the low oleander, close, soybean seeds and everything else. See now what exactly happens in future, the synthesis. We'll know what we say, it is a very difficult task. We learned a very simplest procedure where you can synthesize the silver nanoparticle by mixing these two and exposing to the sunlight. So what is the one? You take the silver nitrate, then you have to take the characteristic of the soybean extract, add them, expose them to the sunlight. You will find it. So nothing is difficult now. Mixing of two, that is one plant extract and second one is the seed extract then you can expose them to the sunlight. So easiest way, not, not worry for these things. See now what exactly happens in this case. So here you are going to find AZNO3 alone. Second one is soybean extract alone. Third one is AZNO3 soybean without exposure to sunlight. And fourth one is exposure to sunlight. See the change in this case. So when you find the characteristic of AZNO3 soybean extract, which is exposed to the sunlight change in the color, this ended in the formation of the silver nanoparticle. 
So that is one of the easiest. We have showed them to the participants who have attended the Green Nanotechnology Laboratory with us. Second question arises is how much time is required? So you may not believe we started with the one that is Thevetia, Perivianum, Yellow Oleander, then the AZNO3 and kept them in the different time factor. The same tube keeping for the different time. See now how the things have happened. So mere exposure of sunlight, AZNP, AZNP 10% of AZNP, that is 10% of the plant extract. Just see now in one minute slide change is a two, three, four, then five, most probably by 10 minutes you can find in one hour. So what is the one now? I'm very sure all of us will accept that. I can also synthesize in my simplest laboratory by using what is that one is any one plant extract. Second one is the NGNO3. Third one is the sunlight, which is available throughout India at any time for these things. And somebody suggested, can you use the pressure technology for these things? Yes, we use the characteristic of what is called by the term as autoclaving. And we started with these things. So in the meantime, my good friend said, sir, we can mix these two go with the silver, go with the sunlight, then go with the characteristic of these things, A plus B combination. We tried, but the results were not always true that whenever we mix these two, they're not always successful working, successful. So I will give the example in relation to the evaluation later at this stage. See now. So what is the phenomenon? We have got these three, AZN03 Peruviana extract. So all the three, then AZN03 alone and the plant extract alone. Now you see what is the change in these things. After adding the characteristic of AZNO3 and other thing else, so you see the change in these things, but definitely autoclaving, you have the phenomenon combination, also you have the phenomenon, but not in the normal P. So mere change in the color is not the conclusion, it is a small indication. Change in the color of silver nitrate in relation to any of the one is a small indication, but not the final conclusion for these things. Similarly, we synthesized in relation to copper nanoparticles. So here we have used the copper, nit copper sulfate in relation to the characteristic of clove extract. So boil it or directly use it in different permutation combination. What we can do is do it after heating or before heating, all the phenomenon we tried. So in relation to these things, neem leaves also we tried. But what is this one is in this case, only by mere stirring. So one we said in relation to the phenomenon of the sunlight. Second one we said in the dark condition, go for the stirring. You can synthesize the characteristic of nanoparticles. Similarly, eucalyptus leaves, we can synthesize what is called by the term as copper nanoparticles. So like this copper sulfur. We have to say for the sulfur, sulfur is a non-metal, but our aim is try to manage in relation to what is called by the term as the powdery medium management. For this, the precursor were used was sodium thiosulfate. That is the one for these things. So now you have the characteristic of the different kinds of the plant material in relation to synthesis of these nanoparticles. So next option is how to evaluate and how much quantity we have to add for the synthesis. So in one of the things, just see now 10 ml of AZNO3 was taken in all the test tubes and we have added the different levels of the plant extract from 100 microliter to 1000 microliter. So we found very effective at the 1000. That is 10 ml plus one ml is the one rather than rest of the things because we got the best peak at this 435 nanometer for the silver nanoparticles. So similarly in relation to sunlight and other things autoclave, we can find it when I mix these two, that is sunlight and the characteristic of the autoclave, my peak has come down. So sometimes don't be under the impression that if I have got the characteristic of both the things, I can do the better. So hopefully it is not good. Sometimes it may work, but in this case, it never worked to the better extent for these things. So I'll give two, three examples where we have tried in relation to synthesis from different ones. One is the Solanum torvum. It is called the wild brinjal, commonly grown as the show plant or a, here and there you can find as the wild one. So we are able to synthesize because it has got sufficient amount of the phytochemicals. So it is the one where we achieved the characteristic of what is called by the term as the 79.9 or you can say approximately 80 nanometer from the NECOM. So what is the problem we can find in this thing is there. So what I said is 100% uniformity of the particles we never achieved in these things. 
so hopefully some more modifications some more trials has to be done in order to make still more and more to separate individual particles for these things similarly it is the one which today you are going to have the explanation but one basic information i would like to say because how i have been exposed to this atomic force microscope so i thought it is something else so my teacher told so beautifully basically we call it as a microscope but it is not at all a microscope it is nothing but a blind person who is moving on the surface or just plowing the land you will see ridges and furrows so based on your movement you have got a character what is called by the term as a cantilever so it is the sample it is the cantilever which is made up of silicon carbide and the highly ones and whatever it moves it is going to be measured by a light and you are going to find it's a picture so you have the x y and z axis a smallest movement placed on this is going to be detected by the laser is going to be detected by the laser and you are going to find it so with this background of the atomic force microscope what we had we have the phenomenon of the particles let's try to see now what is the size for these things it has got 50 to 200 somebody said how best you can say for these things it is depending on the time how much you keep and other things else and definitely we got the one so that is some of the height is 5.5 to 45.3 so if the particle is having in any one direction less than 100 nanometer it is called by the term as nano material so it is not a final one you can how later smaller than this but we don't have the instrumentation to measure smaller than the nanometer somebody says we have achieved hopefully in due course of time we may come across it next one is try to see now the copper sulfate and the clove extract our aim is the time given for the formation of the nano particles so one hour if you keep the size is in micron after 36 hours it is still in the micron to 600 nanometers and after 36 hours of incubation with using of the water bath that is change in the characteristics do permutation combination it is not only science i say it is the art how you prepare the food it is when you add all those things it is your taste and it is your art so definitely based on this you can find what is called by the term as formation and how best you can identify with the nanoparticles by these thing similarly we have the best example what you can find is no3 with reference to plant extract by microwave so we have said sunlight we have said the heating stirring then we said in relation to the word normal microwave we can come across for these things so plant extract and other thing else you can find for these things it is the pomegranate so because they have got the more of the antioxidants for these things so if you analyze them so wonderfully we got the size of 32.5 nanometer so assumption is that definitely they can enter the plant system to the greater extent so it is the one of the one which i have received from a friend professor nagbushan from tumkur university where he has developed in relation to the using of the zinc nitrate without aloe vera with characteristic of change in the concentration he has published wonderful literature on the nanoparticles and he has shown what exactly the nature is there in relation to floriculture definitely you can see in characteristic of nano also see you know, one of the best one is the zinc nitrate with aloe vera gel how best you can make them it is natural arrangement he says it is natural arrangement you have to emphasize how best you can get them without disturbing in the procedure of synthesis that is the one for this thing another one it is the one from krishna who has done phd in relation to the synthesis of aznp from ganoderma see now he has done permutation combination i would like to say in a very simple one 50% he started with the 10 to 80 finally uh, finalized 50% is the one ph 5 to 8.5 finalized 7 so he got the peak at 419 to 421 and in his experiment he says from 22 40 degrees at 5 degrees interval he has characteristic finalized the phenomenon time required from 12 to 14 hours but he tried from the many others so with all these things he said he got the spherical to almost round in nature the particles but he mainly worked in relation to human pathogens we stop at this but his general conclusion is that it is effective against gram positive and gram negative it is from kathia university where krishna worked in relation to nano now coming to the detection i would like to give the two beautiful example very recently from kerala agriculture university 
One is Ahmad Murtaza, who identified the characteristic of infectious chlorosis of banana, which is caused by the cucumber mosaic virus. He synthesized the gold nanorods, generally, which is pinkish rod, 15 to 55 nanometer, conjugated with the characteristic of antibodies. It was a drift you can find from 710 to 719. So what he has done is, he has taken the plant sample, healthy and disease, mix these two and see only change in color, a very simple phenomenon. So if it remain pink, it is healthy. If it change from pink to black, then he says it is the disease. So how to confirm? He confirmed these things by the immunological study. He said other tests, he confirmed. So what is the conclusion now? We can very easily use the gold nanoparticle in identification of infectious chlorosis of banana. Similarly, we have come across the other example where one can use the characteristic of TMV from plasma and resonance one and also confirmed in relation to ELISA. So another example is oyster mushroom spherical virus, plasma and resonance biosensor chip. And equally well, another from once again, the Kerala Agriculture University, banana bunchy top virus by the golden number house. So what we are going to find now is, it was mainly first confined in relation to the group of viral diseases. Right now, and we use for the other thing else. The reason they say is that high surface area, it is not only that high electrical conductivity, they are the ones. So later you will come across fluorescent silica nanoparticles for the characteristic of bacteria, Xanthomonas axonopodis, Pesicatoria. Then also you are going to find the golden nanoparticles for the characteristic of kernel bunt of wheat. So you can find, use them in case of characteristic of the bacteria and also for the fungi. So another one is very recently in the review, you can find annual review of phytopathology in 2018, publications have come across. So they give so beautifully that you have got the biosensors, which you can keep them by chance, if at all the any virus or my pathogen comes in contact, the data is converted into the characteristic of an electronic or a digital one, you can convey to this. Similarly, you can place the characteristic of DNA probe, if at all anyone foreign comes, it identifies. These are the two new methodology where the biosensors are being used. So this is the another important character for these things. So in the net cell, if at all, I want to do the overall gist in this case. So a wonderful review has come across in the annual review of phytopathology in 2018. Now you see the nanoparticle and the pathogen and their importance for these things. So they have given first one in the dicot characteristics, second one or the fruit crops you can see, second one in the monocot or the field crops for these things. Now we will see what are the things they have concluded. But all you find the red one, it indicates that have been tested in the field. Rest of these colors are in vivo for these things. So in this case, if at all you see the color, inhibition that is in relation to the laboratory, these are the ones you do not find any inhibition. That means sometimes the nanomaterials may not inhibit all the organisms, whatever we feel. So in some cases, fissurem is inhibited, but the sometime it may not be inhibited other species. So coming across, you have got the characteristic of copper, zinc, then magnesium, right? Then similarly, we have the TiO2, then silver. So different scientists are there who have worked in relation to these things. So you can find the series of Phytophthora group. So Rhizopastolonifer commonly seen on the characteristic what we call by all the fruits, Fusarium, Alternaria, then Botrytis, Xanthomonas, so many other thing, organisms you can find for these things. So depending on the place of the plant, either the leaf or the fruit or the characteristic of the engervance or the post harvest, you are going to find for these things. It is the one what we can say in relation to what is called by the term as dicot group, coming to the monocot. So what is that one? Similarly, whatever you can find, the similar phenomenon, the best review you can find, the micronutrients and the phenomenon associated with this, where you can be used. So AZ, AZ and silica, then zinc oxide, then copper and other thing else. Similarly, so you are going to find the characteristic of Sorakiniana, Magna Portagraisia, Fusarium Graminearium, Carularia lunata, Melodagan and other thing else. So these are the pathogens. So what I'm emphasizing is some of them are basically airborne. Some of them are present in the soil. So verticillium dialia, melodagan, and fusarium, you can find in these things. Also fusarium you can find on the upper surface. So you can try in relation to this. Bipolar sorakiniana is the one. We have also done some experimentation on these things.
So these are the two basic information I can say. The overall nutshell, what we'd like to say is going to be come across for this. So yesterday also one of the professors so beautifully said, which are the characteristics we can use them for the client pathology in relation to nanotechnology. So I'll give you two, three example in these things. One is the metals, metalloids, and other thing else. I can use them in many ways. See now, bactericide, fungicide, nano fertilizer, delivery system. That is the one for this. CNT, carbon nanotube, meant for the many purpose. You can use for anything else. There is one report where they say that carbon nanotube enhance the tomato yield. The exact role is not known, but they say increase the growth regulatory activity and it has shown. Then we have the example of the liposomes, dendromeres, nanobias, and all these things. Generally, they are meant for the delivery. And next one, the last three, they are meant for what we call by the term as diagnostics. Nanobiosensors, nanocells, and quantum dots, they are the three which are meant for what we call by the term as diagnostics. So you have to develop this, then try in relation to the test organism, whatever you're doing. So what are the organisms we have tested? One is the powdery mildew. Second one is the PKM affinidermatum fluorosium bulbside, which you can find in relation to the rhizome rot of ginger, and Ralstonia, XAP, that is Anthomonas agmenopodis tunicae, which caused the bacterial blight of pomegranate, then loose wet of wheat, then characteristic of the leaf rust, and then what is called by the term as rusticum leaf blight. So in all these things, see now, so wherever the organisms can be grown, we tried in relation to food poison technique. So in case of bacteria, paper disc method. When the problem is there for the culturing or something else, we go for the spore germination. So this can be done in both food poison and everything else, but you get plenty of spores anytime whenever the experimentation is there. So we tried in relation to what is called by the term as the spore germination, also in relation to the powdery mildew. See now what has happened, what are the other diseases we have tried. So whatever the work we do at Dharwad, hopefully every one of us will try to find out some role in relation to Pomerant and our aim since we work to the greater extent with a reference to Pomerant Bechtel Bright with Professor Benegi, who was the vice chancellor and he worked a lot on these things. So whatever we do, so we try to identify whether it works or not, but try for these things. We tried for the Bechtelophars, we tried with the nano, but our success is very limited. So we tried with the other diseases like them, what we call black rot of cabbage, trial B and Carularia is part of the major other thing else. So citrus canker we tried, Ralstonia solna serum we tried, so pathogens and everything else. So few minutes, I will take you exactly where I would like to say the importance in relation to evaluation. See now the spore germination of what is exerohylum tussicum, right? So you have tried to see now the germination is very maximum in water and sucrose. Coming to the characteristic of nanoparticles, it is less, right? So copper nanoparticles, it is less. Even my fungicide, it is less. But what is most important one is when I use my substrate, what I use the copper sulfate, it is also effective. But the problem in this case is this copper sulfate at this concentration, I use the word copper sulfate, this is phytotoxic. When I use these copper nanoparticles, they are non-phytotoxic. So that is the one. So if at all it is effective, but if you reduce the characteristic of phytotoxicity, you can use them for the further studies for these things. See now the germination phenomenon in relation to sucrose, test fungicide, and the characteristic of nanoparticles. Similarly, we tried in relation to the what is called the solanum torvum, that is wild brinjal in relation to bacteria. So try to see only these two examples where we have used the characteristic of dishwater water, that is the one, and plant extract, nothing else. There is nothing, but in rest of all the things, we find the characteristic of inhibition chew. So what is my term? So AZNO3 alone is also in having a characteristic of what is called by the term as the inhibition zone of the organism. Definitely the characteristic of the nanoparticles are there and also this. So my earnest request for all those who are doing with these type of research, you must maintain the controls without formation of the nano, whatever we use. Definitely you will find the real comparative and the justification for these things. I'll give another one or two beautiful example, but always our success is not always associated with these things. See now, the another example, what we are going to find a bipolar sorakiniana, AZNP germination percentage was one, one ppm, 77. Then AZNO3 alone, one ppm, 76. Now you see AZNO3, two ppm and AZNNPs, both are there. 
now the question is shall i use the characteristic of nanoparticles or not so it needs some more efficacy is required something else has to be changed otherwise these two are on par with each other so distilled water plant extract you find to the greater extent so that is the one sometimes all the positive trend you need not be having that it has to reduce it need not be there are many example like this another beautiful example where we fail so try to see you now the characteristic of nanoparticles in relation to pithium afanidermatum which is responsible for the rhizome rot of ginger it is the one which we have done with reference to prof mahesh who is now working with the ars so he has got the culture pithium afanidermatum on pda on the extract of these things and even on copper nanoparticle we never found the inhibition that means this copper nanoparticle even up to 2000 ppm we were unable to find the inhibition zone but definitely copper oxychloride and redomil gold and the co copper sulfate had the inhibition so something required to improve the property the indication is that it is not effective it needs some more requirement how best to can reduce or make it more uniform for these things now can what the term as the management so we have got the examples of nano silver for these are the ones which they have done in relation to glass house that is powdery mildew of wheat and rice blast so then next one is nano copper for bacterial blight one minute bacterial blight next one is the nano silica silver so try to remember it has got the very plus point one is development of the resistance managing the characteristic of the blast of paddy and also the stress tolerance in the crop then carbon nanotubes i said just now it has got the phenomenon of increasing the yield in case of this so if you go to the literature you will come across many examples either the silver which has got the infection on series of organisms and equally will there are the infection in reducing the phenomenon for these things but what is important one is in some time see now in this case only at 10 ppm it has inhibited the characteristic of these many fungi but see now in case of bacteria it required more earlier what we thought always bacteria requires the lesser concentration but the park and his group they say that it need not be the same one they found the difference like these things so similarly one can have the characteristic of fluconazole and asian pen other things they were found on par with these things that is the nanoparticles and other things else they are almost similar on these things i would like to say the another beautiful example or the experimentation done by wade elmer and his team in relation to management of the fusarium wilt of watermelon fusarium nevium is the collagen wilt is this and he has developed the characteristic of the nano materials copper oxide mno sio2 and tio2 and he used at the rate of 1 to 2 ml per series see now what has happened he has applied to the plant and see now so he found that this reduction in the disease increase in the biomass and then they analyze in relation to the enzyme activity that is p2 and pr1 gene has been expressed to the greater extent and suppress the organism fusarium nevium reduce the disease so what is the overall conclusion we can say copper nanoparticles can be used for the characteristic of fungal disease management more particularly for the way so another very recent example it first time in the world which has been done by professor dilip ghosh and his team with the characteristic of many other scientists from the iit groups so what they have done is in relation to the term what we call by the term as candidatus liberobacter asiaticus or hong long bing or hlb disease of citrus group which is mainly transmitted by the citrus leaf till now they don't have any management aspect so they synthesize zinc oxide nanoparticle with the albumin they injected this into the plant in 1 is to 1 ratio right so now you can find this after introduction of these nanoparticles what they can find the regular interval they analyze the characteristic of what is the concentration of the pathogen candidates liberobacter asiaticus so see now it has reduced to the greater extent they can say it is another one of the best example in the entire world i repeat my word it is for the entire world the course from the citrus research institute they have developed in relation to the iit team 
so that is the one so that means one can think in the management to the better extent for these things now you will come across many other examples using of the nano silver rose powdery mildew right silica gel other things else all of them have their own significance so if you put the literature so my students have done wonderful review you will come across nearly 15 to 20 for each group whatever you can find for these things so conservation and the other thing else can we have the phenomenon for these things series of organisms and other thing else you can find in these things so next one is in relation to using of them in the powdery mildew of the cucumber see now they have developed that we have developed the characteristic of sulfur nanoparticles and then applied on the cucumber plant in the net house so it is before and after it is in control that is nothing is sprayed in relation to these things now you see the next one this is the one before and after application of sulfur nanoparticles at 500 ppm it is the one sodium thiosulfate which was applied you find the phytotoxicity we have developed the nanoparticle by using the sodium thiosulfate sodium thiosulfate alone is phytotoxic but when i convert them into the characteristic of nano it is not phytotoxic that is the one for this thing so if you see now the correct what we call by the term is sulfur nanoparticles they are the ones and less than this they are not effective that is most important one at one concentration you can find then sodium thiosulfate practically you do not find the presence of the plant for these things so that is the one what you can find for these things next another example beautifully you can see now in relation to sunflower what we are going to find so 500 1000 in the control can we find the difference in these things so and nitrous to o3 you can find the characteristic of the necrosis and opening of the flower everything else has been stopped so what is the term now in glass house remember in glass house the sunflower will not grow luxuriantly always the stem is thin so you have to provide characteristic of some staking otherwise it will not remain stand to the greater extent so now you can very easily say that sodium thiosulfate is phytotoxic but not the characteristic of this thing same thing another one we tried in relation to the cocky powder we do in glass house so we had the experimentation on these things see now the extract it is there 500 nothing else and it is the control so this is clearly indicates that definitely there is some value so coming to the phytotoxicity see now neem based silver nanoparticles we put on the phenomenon of the citrus leaf then see on these things what you can find nothing except the characteristic of the taste of the salt you can find for these things so that is the one for these things second one soya base similar thing you can find when somebody suggested we don't do all those things on the citrus because citrus is sturdy so in place of citrus can we use the other plant material slowly we move it is for the copper and slowly we move to the characteristic of tomato supposed to be the highly succulent ones yes when we tried in relation to the tomato we can find water soak lesions there is likely chance of the phenomenon of water soak lesion sometimes we can find the phytotoxicity for these things so when i use them to the greater extent in tomato you find it to the characteristic of this phytotoxicity this that is only my water soak lesion nothing else is there that means it recovers but at least we want to say that there is some water soak lesions you are going to find for these things similarly we tried in relation to the chili nothing has happened for these things now come to the one point what is called by the term as the disadvantages the last of question marks are found to be in these things is it environment problem or health problem are there so you can find untraceable materials which are surrounding you so it may distract the entire one social and political issues and another most important one who has put a wonderful question which we don't have any answer at least you can create the word is ecophagy that means surrounding this self replicating nanobots are there they are going to control the entire earth not only human beings they say these are the materials which you can say it is only imagination by a fiction writer it cannot be said for these things so someone will say it enhances the long global warming someone will say it creates the living fog because of this nanobots which have got the characteristic of multiplication so now i would like to conclude last few slides so what is there is synthesis definitely we can say 
kytos on plant based micro copper so many materials and next one is sorry after synthesis after synthesis we come across the persons who have worked with these things so in a conclusion if at all i want to say one is we synthesize in relation to the different methods starting from the sunlight to the plant and using of the microbes then we evaluated again as the microbes we evaluated the phytotoxicity and also we tried in relation to what we call by the term as their accessibility in relation to the other groups so i would like to say a few persons who have done wonderful job in these things he is professor r r patel professor of entomology he has knowledge from the basic entomology from tnau because of this he introduced the thevetia for experimentation chikana swami who worked in relation to nano so the practically handling of the afm was with chikana swami next vinay on the characteristic what we call by the term as kytoson he is the one who has developed in relation to all the microbial part so mahesh who worked on the rhizome rot of ginger in relation to this and he is a wonderful person biochemist see now how the fate is there wonderful biochemist phd everything else is there he went for pda from the israel very recently came now he is the problem don't have a job for the lab he has to work for something else and he is the another person who is basically a microbiology wonderful person in handling all the instrumentations so the persons who work with me now they move for the other work so now she is the ada he is the tobacco man and he is a research assistant and among all you can say he is now working in relation to came so that is covid actually and he is the one an extraordinary man which i can say a nano real man so be be electronics and tech nano nanotechnology phd doing it in relation to nanotechnology he has his own problem of doing things so and they are all the ones who have done to the great extent it is not me alone i was just one among the 100 you can say for these things they are the students they are the workers who help to the greater extent for these things so to conclude sorry so now with all these things I simply say i have taken almost 65 minutes so i thank you very much for your patience hearing if at all anything went wrong with me kindly excuse thank you very yes, much i would like to show this yes sir so thank you for your patience sir, and uh, please think positive you have the many options in front of you in future sir can you stop sir, sharing the slides sir okay now i have to close this now yes sir yes sir stop sir yes sir stop one minute Is something else will come? Up? No, sir. In the okay, one minute. Ah, now I have closed. Yes, sir. The red, red color. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Even it is also closed, it, sir. In the in the corner, sir. Ah, in the. We just close that. Uh, okay. Close it. Yes, sir. Yes. Fine. Sir. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. My face is visible. Okay. Thank yes. you. Yes. Yes, sir. So now, if anything goes wrong, kindly excuse me. I am very much thankful to you and your team and Honorable Vice Chancellor Kattimani. M.G. Patil, Desai, then Virul Gowda, and all others for you and the patient hearing of all my participant, my fellow colleagues. I can say because afternoon also once again I become the participant with them. Thank you, sir. Sir, can I have the question and answer session? Ah, now it is time, sir. Yes, Hopefully, sir. I got another thirty minutes. We will enjoy those things. Yes, sir. So, okay. on, so really, it is uh, started with uh, Nana to Nano. So, really, it's a wonderful uh, uh, the thought provoking and ideas and uh, the work which you have carried out in the university of agriculture sciences dharwad and you made the complete detail in and out of the nanotechnology not only in the plant pathology in all the areas which you have been come across sir thank you very much sir for your wonderful presentation so now with your permission we'll start the question and answer yes, sir. session sir yes, yes sir. sir sir what are the future prospects of nanoparticles in plant disease management so it is like this you have been given a sword how best i can use them definitely i can say if you are really expert you can do wonderful job i can say you can when the persons are identifying in relation to viruses my question is why not bacteria and fungi i can identify if i can identify i can use the characteristic of nano synthesized materials for the management please remember the nano materials need not be thought in one direction 
Yesterday somebody said so beautifully that it must be considered as a macronutrient, it must be considered as a disease resistance, it must be considered as an insecticide, and also the characteristic to reduce it. And finally, you have to think what is their impact on the other microbes. Don't go and represent that I want to reduce only the pathogen. It may affect my regular favoring bacteria or fungi also. You have to think. But definitely I can say it is the best field, but people want the job, not the work. Don't think in a wrong way. My students who have done it, they want only the job, but not the work. Definitely if they have continued, it is a new area. They can do a wonderful job in this. Yes, sir. Sir, yes. copper and sulfur are best candidates for fungal disease management. However, yes. in nanoform, if they become plant systemic, what yes. will be the effect of plant physiological changes? Please remember, it will not change the physiology. I'll give the best example. The best example I can say is the fungicide, metal axil. It is a systemic, it enters into the system. It will not do anything else extra. Wherever the pathogen is there, it will reduce. So similarly, this copper and the sulfur, if they become, they reduce the major one, the downy mildew, try to recollect. The best example is in green. If it stops in the early stage, you can save your maximum disease to the greater extent. So if you just analyze the quantity of fungicides used in the grapes, they say nearly 50 to 70% only for the downy mildew. Next is powdery mildew and anthrax. So just think, if I found these two are the best chemicals, I can say that we will solve many things. Second example I would like to say, we are using these two chemicals long back. Give the example of the Bordeaux mixture. Since ancient time, more than one century old, we are using this. I'll give you another beautiful example. This copper sulfate is known to be used by the human beings for management of the skin disease. Nothing will happen. But the aim is we must use at the lesser concentration. Not if it is using the effect to don't use to the greater extent. It will not change the physiology according to my opinion. Okay. Yes, sir. From the farmer's point of view, whether is it cost effective, sir? 100% cost effective. I will give you the best example. When exposed to the sunlight and plant extract, if you get it, what is required? So it is only for the synthesis we put a lot of efforts. Nobody has given a concept that you can synthesize so easily. So when I entered into nano, please remember, earlier they never allowed to enter their laboratory. That was the restriction we had. So that means something else it is there. When they hand it over to me, they say even layman can do the experimentation. It is nothing like this. Just boiling and adding the chemical, you are going to find it. So I'll give you the beautiful example in this case, sir. The oldest example of the Bordeaux mixture. If anybody knows exactly the correct composition and the correct pH, remember the word correct pH, you can do wonderful. So still now, please remember more than one century, it is the best chemical even now it is there. So definitely nothing will happen. You can synthesize. You have to make streamlining the phenomenon. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, what is the practical applicability of nanoparticles at field level against pathogens? When you can manage in the glass house, at least out of 150 or 10 will work in the field. That is more than sufficient. So just recollect the word when fungicides are there, they start with more than 10,000 in the first initial one. They come to the practical approximately in glass house 100. In the field, they can finally select one or two. So now you have got the, all the basic data with you. Now digital is there. A lot of information is available at one point. Definitely you can screen them, select them. And I will assure you, we can do it. But only commitment is required. Dedication is required. That is the one thing. So I have given the two examples where our practically we failed. We reported like that only. So don't be the impression that every time whatever nano is synthesized, it has to know. It needs some modification in the shape or the size or the concentration. Based on that, one can do it. Negative yes. result is also a positive for the next continuation of the research. It is my firm opinion. Yes. Earlier, we used to say, if negative is there, please don't publish it, keep it among something else. Now we decided at least many of the things you have published like that. It is yes. not effective at particular concentration. When it is effective beyond that concentration, we say for those things. Yes, yes. Sir. yes sir. sir, silver is a toxic metal. So if it is used on plants, is it safe for human consumption? And what is its impact on environment? Please remember, nothing is toxic or nothing is always this. Yes. Silver is the one where we started our birth feeding of the kid, silver spoon of sugar or milk. Do you know what is the reason? They have got very small amount of nano. So it is the oldest and the basic concept. I would give you another beautiful example for this. 
when in the olden time the kids were given with what is called swarna bhasma it is the one costliest one but very trace amount is given it gives immunity throughout your life who says silver is the toxic if that being the case nobody would enter to the all these markets gold and silver even with all these conditions you can find to the greater extent for this nothing when you cross your limit definitely everything is there that is the one for this things the whatever the concentration we are using it is 1 millimolar just imagine 1 millimolar where is the phenomenon yes sir sir please sir anything you excess is dangerous sir always dangerous including yes. whatever can say amrita ushava yes, yes sir yes sir yes. yes sir the plant extract upon prolonged exposure to sunlight gets degraded how that has not happened in your experiment is there any role of silver nitrate in preventing degradation no we have done in just 60 minutes 10 minutes or 15 minutes we synthesize even if don't think for the days to something else we have done that synthesis in just 5 10 minutes we have done we get maximum 60 minutes can we find the change so you find for this thing if you keep it outside only the plant extract definitely you will come across many of the organisms we know very well when you evaluate the plant extract for the any particular organism we always see the contamination that is true but when we add this now it is a fungicide or a bactericide you can just imagine it has got this and basically silver nitrate is the microbial one so in the market i would like to say very recently somebody has claimed whether it has given by the approval or not nobody knows so hydrogen peroxide with the silver nitrate has entered the market they are adding to the soil to the plant nobody knows but there is a restriction when we wanted to enter to the field they said you cannot take it but now they have entered private have got some wonderful ideas to enter for these things you can find in the market it is available yes sir right sir, sir what what will be nutrient concentration can be achieved by green nano synthesis so this our aim is not for the nutrient mostly yesterday somebody said no one can survive the human being by only by providing the saline it is just only at the icu level so don't be under impression that saline will make you survival for something else keep them along with the saline no it is not so when problem is there you solve it don't be if that being the case please remember all the human beings were only given the concentrated food nothing else do you mean to say that he can survive no 100% no we need the bulk so generally one of my teacher who used to say indians not only need the nutritious food he also needs the bulk that is most important one so that it is not the feeling from the stomach it has to feel somewhere else it has to when only you can find the real healthiness of the food or something else yes, please sir. absolutely true sir sir is it nano is energy efficient technology nano is the energy energy efficient technology definitely see energy efficient in two manners if i use the characteristic of what we call by the term as the artificial one the high pressure high temperature thing else it is not but when you come to the nano of these green ones plants they are naturally available microbes they are around you you need not put even normal potato on this you can multiply where is the question of energy you are going to use just burning on the current just preparing the food one autoclave will do it sunlight it will do it nothing else so if you go to the characteristic of artificial in relation to using the high pressure and high temperature definitely it is difficult but in nano that is the basic rule to enter for the green nano why the purpose was that you can reduce all the cost all the energy efficiency to the greater extent yes sir so neem neem based or the active ingredients like azadrithin or nimbicidin is effective can we identify the secondary metabolites in different herbs for its effectiveness it is like this i said the one beautiful example when i learned my uc my, my professor biochemistry try to recollect in a plant species all together how many phenolic compounds are there everybody teaches us that phenols are responsible for the resistance every total phenol is the responsible for the resistance when you go to the characteristic of that book he says 80000 phenol compounds are there is there anyone who can identify 80000 separately then see 192 193 like this all permutation combination it is just impossible try to identify to some extent but remember sometimes it is always consortia as effective not individual two persons cannot lift a bag but two are there they can lift another two three bags that is the one so many phenolic compounds together they will do it but alone it may not be the exact it yes. is not so easy also honestly it is very difficult 
we tried with reference to the characteristic of pomegranate bactrial blight we wanted to identify which is the best chemical you may not believe madhu is the one who worked to the greater extent he spent almost 6 months only to identify the molecule he failed then he said do it only for the 48 hours whatever is there you give the answer if you wait for 3 months so many things will happen in the plant you cannot identify the chemical to the greater extent yes sir. please sir sir can we use sulfur nano pesticides for the management of red spider mites yeah sulfur is best candidate as a acaricide 100% sir sulfur is both acaricide and for the powdery mildew when you manage with this definitely we can do it so yes. that is the advantage somebody said from the group of soil sciences said it can also be considered as a secondary nutrient why can't you apply second one so one can try it we tried in relation to other insects but not the mites definitely it has to if any one is there definitely one can try for these things yes sir and it, if it works remember in chili you are doing the wonderful job chili spider mites are the ones which cause the maximum damage there sir what is the status of nanotechnology regulation in india so it is like this everybody knows nobody wants to have the responsibility <laughs> so you want to have the model plan is it possible just i will give the one example which i can never forget in my life one of the student i have given one basic questions to all the students what is your model plant somebody will say it has to be maximum it has to be perennial something else. but one student by name i will tell his name also now no relation with sheshgiri is the one person he has written so beautifully which i never forget my plant must be in such a way that it must go for the branching right stem must be sugar cane leaf must be leafy vegetable top you must find the characteristic of grains of sorghum and the side you must get the characteristic of cob below you must get the potato and the sweet potato no it is the ideal but can we reach no but at least you have the model right so model can be changed the second example i will give for these things we teach many students in relation to how to handle the microscope moving from one place to another we give so many restrictions honestly any teacher any lab assistant whoever is there can he do this he know something problem he can do it very easily so he can very easily lift and keep it so in the procedure you try to see no 12 rules are there how to handle right hand with this left hand with this top angle something else so it needs some more modifications but in a room when you are sit comfortably you can put so many regulations when you come to the field you will come to know the real problem those who are working in nano technology and under the field condition they must be involved in the forming the rules and regulation hopefully they will come to the greater extent rather than the persons who are sitting at the top level their rules and regulations may not work yes sir absolutely right sir sir is there any effect of drop size distribution on plant response is there any effect of effect of drop size distribution on plant response definitely size definitely. of particle definitely definitely smaller the particle smaller the drop size more is the effect that yes. is the basic rule in the management of plant disease so generally we say high volume low volume and ultra low volume so in ultra low volume the particle size is less and equally well the total quantity of the chemical is also less it is more effective always yes sir but how many times we are able to do it in a common laboratory i cannot convert the no thing into normal characteristic of ultra low volume so we use the normal volume spray next question by chance if you do it the question is asked whether it is applicable to the farming community yes sir see now the same person who asked this question also and suddenly he changes the word what is the use for the farming community so yes. you must have one particular direction say what is this one. please sir sir will you will we be able to replace the existing pesticides with nano materials no it is always an augmented one no yes sir please remember nothing can be replaced by only nano not in future also it is my opinion right no one can replace anything else now you can say the integrated management or wherever the problem is that you can use one or two sprays of this and you can reduce at the basic level so instead also said two important things one is the foliar second one is the seed don't think for the soil application yes sir so the problem i will tell you we have some experimentation from the other group where they wanted to add to the soil and see the response of these things the question raised is the soil contain all these nutrients how you separate that my molecule is separate from the zinc or the iron or something else it is not possible if at all i want to do it the condition is that i am a start my experimentation with hogland solution 
you have to do it in the sand acid wash sand and provide only distilled water with homogeneous solution which is very difficult that you can do for those things yes sir sir which one is highly effective copper nanoparticle or copper sulfate nanoparticle to control diseases and which one has a lower concentration no no it is not like this please remember don't be confined that copper sulfate is good or copper oxide is good no what you synthesize what is their property how you make it that is going to decide so generally assumption is that 20 to 40 size nanometers can enter very easily into the plant compared to 60 and 80 that is the one basic concept we had so based on this only you can find so that is i said the gold plants are there it is not the gold directly taken from the soil the size of the nanoparticles were 20 to 40 they can enter very easily during the exchange program they are absorbed for these things that is the one so don't be confined to this it is the ion which is going to decide to the greater extent you come from the nitrate or from the sulfate definitely it does the same function yes sir sir can we use plant extract as a carrier on plant nutrients plant extract as a carrier for the nutrients i never can i guess honestly yes. what you can do is plant cakes can be used not the extract yes plant cakes oil cakes nothing else we can use it Yes. I have never come across that the plant extract of neem. I have added these things. I can make the coating, but I cannot use the carrier to the greater extent. Carrier is the one which has got something extra property. So only neem is the best example. We say neem coated. It is not directly neem coated. Neem with what is called coal tar. Together you add something else, then it is there. Mere neem will not be so easily coated for these things. It is my knowledge, whatever on these things. We should require some binding material to. definitely yes sir i never touched the word emulsions because i never worked on this but yesterday somebody said so beautifully so it is not only your nano particle along with this if you join the nano emulsions your efficiency will be more when they achieve only with the nano emulsion just imagine normal particles of the fungicide add the nano emulsions you get the best example so normal fungicide just imagine normal chemical emulsion has been changed you can find the effect to this so we never tried in relation to nano emulsions definitely one can think nano particle with emulsions that is the most important yes sir sir what is your suggestions to young generation in view of disease management of agriculture crops with moving to feed the world so first thing is that they have to come out from the lab rock yes the honest thing is that when i enter for the any workshop or conference people whoever is there on that they want only the molecular work for the awards of prize or anything else We, there are many persons who are working in the very small villages and places i'll give my own example i work in a place raichur and bimran would nothing is there in bimran would you may not believe we never had the flask leave aside anything else so under that condition how you expect the molecular work to be carried out if at all we want to compete in the so everybody wants so at least i insist at my student whatever is there you go for one week or 15 days leave from this go to the some laboratory and do it so whoever wants to achieve something else field exposure is the most important one in my personal opinion then only you can do wonderful job field with the lab it is the one you can do it but without field hopefully no one can survive yes sir it is my so, opinion huh? yes it not be forced that those who are expert in the nano or something else i want to do only in the laboratory or virology no you must be exposed to the field then only you will change the so many things then only we can understand the real situation reality yes sir reality is different that is why i said shifting of the microscope theoretically and practically in just 2 minutes you will shift but if you read rules and regulation it almost half an hour just to shift that that is the way. yes sir sir will it be able to replace the existing fungicides bactericides uh, for, by using the nano materials no i said it is an augment it is addition no yes sir at least another 10 to 15 years it cannot because our research is not efficient to replace just we want to manage one or two most important pathogens and do it for just imagine in case of bacterial blight or permeable bacterial blight we have only limited chemicals one or two but we are doing it permutation combination that is the only thing yes sir sir how exactly nanoparticles affect on the pathogens or microorganisms there are two schools of thought earlier whatever my knowledge is there nobody knows the exact what is there for this very recently some report has given that they mainly act on the cell membrane of the pathogen the report which has come then somebody said it is not only that 
inside also they enter into the cell that is rupturing of the cell and in turn affect this but they are not proved beyond doubt there is no experimental proof that it has entered in this these have the cell walls degraded no nothing else it is the hypothesis so please remember when nothing is proved beyond doubt somebody gives the explanation we follow it and we can't do it in our laboratory also because we never see the cell wall penetration or the entry into this whatever is there but definitely it will do some function in those things sir apart from antimicrobial property of silver nanoparticles what other best metal nanoparticles you can recommend for maintaining the post harvest shelf life of fruits sir my opinion copper is the one silver is the first followed by copper is the one second and third if at all we want to add you can add the zinc because okay. if you find the very plus point of the zinc that it is nutritionally good yes sir then acceptable for the food consumption you are increasing the food value and also so if you find very... that when you cannot enter directly inside the seed or inside the fruit or something else if you coat on the surface in such a way that making the perfectness for the movement transport or for anything else then increasing the self life definitely we and also zinc is having a very good enzymatic activity sir even ha zinc is on yes, and i'll give the one beautiful example you may not be difficult when the disease is more on a particular plant it reduces the yield but increases the zinc okay so that means most of the nutrients have been lost zinc remains in the seed that is the one they say so if at all completely disease plant disease seeds are taken and only healthy seeds are taken based on the total volume and total weight if you analyze for the zinc definitely you will find because most of the other factors have been lost only those micronutrients they have to remain they will not so easily go away so proteins fats and everything else have been lost so it is sometimes we find that very odd but real to this there in these things sir in future the nanotechnology is it going to make a complete solution for the diseases No, I said it is an augmenting in yes. future. No, I yes, cannot. No, yes. no, no. At least another ten to fifteen years in this case. Until yes. unless something a revolution occurs, the what we have seen in case of the what we, this mobiles and other things. Yes. Try yes. to recollect in the history of these things how much time we have spent in typing our thesis earlier yes. when the characteristic of the CD came. Then we come across for this. Now pen drive is there. Now it is there. You can carry in a very small pen drive. You can do one. so if some happens definitely we can think of yes, the sir. things are going on in different directions nobody knows where one can find the answer for these things yes. when there is a single layer of a molecule is formed just imagine a protein single layer that is approximately one atomic layer if it comes definitely somebody says we can solve the problem of teacher to the great rex no one can take but remember no one can cross yes sir no one can cross the limit Yes. we cannot change the entire thing else yes. okay. sir how can we use nanoparticles in diagnosing diseases in spices and medicinal crops it never differentiate for the disease like spice or animal or something else we are trying in relation to plant as one unit so you have got the biosensors which are going to be tried i have given the best example in case of banana so because they work on these things so ahmed mutaza who is from this only he completed phd there i happened to interact with him i come across for these things so they said they synthesize and use it so why not we when somebody can do in other parts of this why not we so somebody has to put the effort so being a student my says if i enter for msc my crop has to be finished in 3 months or maximum 6 months don't want to have the perennial crops ask anyone who is ready to work on coconut or coconut no student is ready because the time is only for the research group we can think and definitely one can do it and most important one if at all we want to do it in ganoderma of coconut it is the one which takes 5 years to express the symptom by that time the stem is rotten if anybody is ready to work for the group of this identification we are doing the wonderful jobs that is required but slowly we are entering into this field okay. yes sir sir what about the stability of these green synthesis materials sir it is like this how much you add the stabilizing agent that is the one so i'll give you the two beautiful example silver nanoparticles which can remain viable for two months who katesh katti has synthesized we say up to 6 months others say only up to 3 months if i don't have the characteristic of the capping or adding the material like the gum or something else the survivability or the activity is lost very short 
so that is why they say sonication is the most important thing it is not only for this even normal medicine when the liquid is given the doctor advises shake well before use so similarly you have to go for the sonication in these things so make that defluctuation that is whatever the fluctuation is there make them separate to the greater extent you can use that sir can the nano entomopathogenic fungi formulations can be more effective against pests since nobody has worked definitely you can think of so it is a wide field wide thing else so somebody has to work on these things till now i have come across wherever is there nobody has worked definitely entomology and pathology anyone who is ready to cross the boundary of the subject they can do it yes. if i want my project only for entomology not to go i said many number of times let them go to nanotechnology get one metal test your organism just start with the laboratory in raichur also i said in medicine only few at least in dharwad now they are doing whatever the products from the nano they take and test their organism test initiation plus or minus leave us at least start the initiation somebody will come across this so i am very sure you are doing lot of work how many of them were used by the entomology pathology and agronomy yes sir it is only you i said personally to many members nobody is ready someone has to enter take the responsibility take something else bag borrow or steal is the oldest concept request them definitely everybody will help i am very sure that is the one sir yes sir. yes sir there are materials already available like fungicides herbicides in the market as a nano tebicrozonozol nano tricozol kytosine exosonozide so is it having the nano materials or what exactly it is sir one can convert the molecule into nano size one of the experimentation which i came across from iiri robin goga is the person who worked on the characteristic of hexaconazole the project was given to him that they have given the original molecule of the hexaconazole and asked him to convert them into the nano so along with a group of biochemist and chemist and so many others they have done it they presented the one of the information paper in this things so that means if a molecule is given you can convert them so they have done it so i'll give another two example hopefully one is the very common you can find live boy is that you are seeing there is one mark nano silver nobody claims but they say only this nano silver a right mark is there everybody using it nobody question yesterday somebody said so beautifully all the lipstick you also said sunscreen those creams they are the ones nobody questions that one when it comes to common people then they say no something else will happen they will lose their life or something else even when it comes to the edibles then people will start asking so many things but please remember lips is so easily acceptable any time knowingly or unknowingly it will enter into the human body when mm. you say it is tio2 it can enter the human skin very easily nothing has happened but we want to have something else on this thing yes sir even in the nail polish what they are using it is uh, added with the nano material sir sir all the characteristic of shining nature in the anything shining nature which remains for longer time it must have the characteristic of this the paints what we use it is nano ravi verma somebody said it is the one what you are using it so it is this nano cars painting it is the one. so we have the two different kinds of opinion when he wants to paint his home he wants the paint has to remain for a longer time shining when he wants to ask for somebody no no you should not use the nano in his home one he wants the painting with the nano material but when wants somebody to use it he writes beautifully that nano metal should not be given for consumption or use in the home affairs or something else so these are the things which you are finding to the greater extent sir only one last question with your permission Please. yes sir okay. sir what is the effectiveness is observed when nano botanicals applied on the crops so i have said the beautiful example we can manage the powdery mildew we have given the example we have said the citrus canker also chicken has worked on these things so in different crops list is there we are not given the entire list for those things we can manage but remember we are not been permitted to enter the field yes we put a restriction rod what is this one don't cross it so even if you have the things you don't go so mostly in your laboratory also you have got the wonderful one simply try for these things lot of restrictions are there yes, so if you take permit hopefully we can do it i will assure you the synthesis from the natural one what is that sunlight is there with the raichur is full of sunlight nobody problem any time any even rainy days also we can synthesize that is the advantage we have yes sir. Is, yes sir. please sir thank you very much for your wonderful interaction and wonderful presentation 
on the uh, the morning session of the uh, fifth day uh, role of nanotechnology in food and agriculture so on behalf of the uh, honorable vice chancellor and the officers of the university and my uh, fellow participants uh, really sir you have made the uh, nano plant pathology into a very simple uh, simple simple nano so that's what you said nana so like that uh, really sir we have enjoyed your presentation uh, uh, the the skill presentation slides and the, the explanation what we have done during the interactions so on behalf of like once again on behalf of the participants uh, i extend my sincere thanks for your uh, wonderful presentation sir thank you very much sir thank thanks, you very much thank you very thank much can we have regards to all your officers friends circle and the team members namaste sir right? thank so you sir you have given me time to learn something more on this after retirement that is the greatest thing thank right? you so thank, thank you sir thank you thank you sir. thank you very much so this is the uh, information to our uh, participants for the afternoon session so we have completed the excellent presentation in the morning session uh, by our uh, guruji dr nargun sir on application of nanotechnology in plant pathology so in the afternoon session we have a advancement in afm that is atomic force microscope and its applications by a excellent expert i can say why i used to word is excellent so he is a uh, he is a man of stefan stefano preto he is from italy so you can just google it uh, stefano preto he has published more than uh, 40 excellent papers in the top rated journals sir so he is doing uh, research in ap research laboratory in italy and he is having a company also so we have requested him in the uh, explanation for the application of uh, efm in the field of nanotechnology has readily accepted and he is joining with us at sharp 255 pm in the afternoon so i request uh, all the participants uh, delegates to kindly join with us by 250 pm sharp uh, so that we can start the session uh, without any delay so once again i extend my sincere thanks to all the members uh, joined uh, for this uh, morning session and uh, you know, made your comments uh, in the chat box and uh, clear your doubts if you have any clarifications any doubts please uh, put it in a chat box so that i can send a mail to nargun sir and uh, get the answer for you guys thank you very much uh, and stay home be safe thank you sir jai hind sir thank you.